So Dan just left with Addie to bring her to school. I am waiting for my little guy to wake up. I don't think you can see him. And then I have to wake Louie up in like 25 minutes. He has midterms all week, so he doesn't have like a typical school day. He just has one test today. So I have to get him up soon and get him to school. I would just vlog my day. I get a lot of questions about like the timing of my day, like what our schedule's like. So every day I get up and I get Addie up and dressed. Um, most of the time I get her up at like 7 a.m. But today um, I got her up a little bit later because we didn't have to bring Louie. We usually bring Louie and then drop Addie. But because we didn't have to bring Louie, we could get Addie to school a little bit later. So I actually got up at 6.30, took a shower, dried my hair. I love that time in the morning when everybody is still sleeping and I could just shower in peace and get myself somewhat together. I'm going to curl my hair and put some makeup on in a little. But I got her up and dressed and fed. She didn't really want a lot of breakfast this morning. And I don't blame her. Like, I can't eat breakfast first thing when I wake up either. But I made her have some oranges. Um, but they have snack time, like, at 10, which is only two hours in. And I pack her fruit and yogurt, so I'm not too worried about it. I usually pack their lunches at night, but I got lazy last night. We watched This Is Us and then this crazy show called temptation island it's a train wreck so we were up late so i didn't end up making her lunch so i got up and did that this morning our new couch is coming today that's part of the reason why i wanted to vlog today because i can't wait to show you guys i'm so excited so the boys moved our couches downstairs into the basement we actually have another couch set downstairs in the basement because we had dan's and mine so mine we're actually donating to goodwill and Dan's that we moved downstairs will stay downstairs for Louie to like hang out plays video games um, This chair is also going to be going downstairs too, but we left it just for now so that I can Have somewhere to sit today with Bentley The couch isn't coming until like three other than that. I don't have much on the agenda today I have to drop Louie at school at 10 and then he gets picked up at 1130. So Rather than coming home. I was thinking of maybe going and getting a quick pedicure. I have not had a pedicure in I think two months and my feet are literally starting to hurt that's how bad so I'm gonna see if they have anything I could just walk in and do a quick appointment and then go back and get him now I'm just gonna tidy up and wait for Bentley to wake up he's starting to move around and then get Louie up and then get on with our day hi you guys your bunny are you pooping are you doing poopies Hi. Got your love, love. Oh. oh my goodness. Where's your baby? Where's your the poopies? Ah. Where's stink? This one? Not this one too. Oh. Look how cute he is. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? What are you doing? I would like to change a diaper. I see you. I see you. You stink a little bit. Can I change you? Oh, you're going to put them back? Good trying. Mommy, help you. Boop. We're almost there. Almost at the bottom. Boom. Hmm. Do I have some milk? This is what he does. I open them and then he closes them. Why are you closing my windows? Why are you doing that? You think it's funny? You can't bring that out there. You gotta leave the Bentley. You gotta leave water in the kitchen. Can mommy have that? We'll leave it here. You cannot bring your water in the playroom. Uh, nope, sorry. Give me the water. Uh, Come on. Take a drink and we'll put it on the counter. 
You can look at me with those little eyes all you want. Drink goes on the counter. Bent. Give it to mommy. Come on. Come on. Thank you. It's here if you want it. You can't bring it in the playroom. You want to go play? It's okay. Do you want to go in the playroom? Oh, that face. I'm sorry, bud. I'm sorry. Don't look at me like that. I hate when he does that. I still love you. He is giving me the stink eye right now. Stink eye. You gonna make me something? In the kitchen? You need that? In the bucket. Say thank you. Uh. Go ahead, you can do it. There you go. Uh. Toast it up. Uh. Go ahead. It. You gonna put the other piece of toast in? <coughs> you wanna turn that? It's gonna pop! There it goes! It's ready! Do it again? Do you want more? Do you want more? Show mommy. More? Show mommy more. More. Good job. Okay. Ready? I'm gonna toast it. Can you wave? Wave. <laughs> he finished all his eggs. So now I'm gonna give him banana, which he just did the sign language for, and some toast. If I started with it all on one plate, he probably would not have even eaten the eggs. Can you show them banana? Banana, good job. Good job. Good job. So with the, speed, the speech therapist that's coming to the house, she has us working on um, having him take bites on the side of his mouth so that he is forced to use his tongue to move the food back and forth. So that's why I cut it up into strips. Right? Say we're still working on it. That's milk. You want milk? Do you want milk or more? Good job. Let me get you a tissue. It's hot. <laughs> Taste. <laughs> mmm. He still gets frustrated because he's not eating fast enough, but we're working on slowing him down. Say more. Good job. Thank you. You can do it. Chew. More? Banana? Mmm. Wanna try? Good job.
job. Good job. Well, he um, was under for his little tongue tie procedure. They also took out a lot of wax in his ears. They told me beforehand that they could if I wanted to. Um, and I did because the few times that we've been in the pediatrician's office where he's tried to get the wax out, Bentley freaks out. So um, when they took the wax out, they were able to get like a really good look at his ears and they said that he does have some fluid behind his ears. Not to where it's like infected, but something that they wanna monitor. Um, and he's also a little bit like delayed with his speaking. Addie was too. Um, I'd say she really started talking when she was just about like 18 months, but prior to that, I was really concerned because she wasn't saying very much. Um, but once she hit like 18 months, it was like something just switched, just flipped. So I'm not overly concerned with Bentley, but the speech pathologist that's coming to the house added a speech goal on his plan so um but she said with the fluid being in his ears that could be why he's having trouble speaking and also the tongue tie could have been related to that so for now she's having me just do a lot of sign language with him so that he's able to still communicate things that he wants or needs what did you just put no 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 okay that was okay mommy sorry that was okay um you want it in front of you his receptive language is amazing. He understands everything I'm saying, but his ex he has trouble expressing. So that's what we're working on, but he's been doing really great with sign language and he gets really excited to do it. So I'm hoping, we go back in two weeks for his like ENT follow-up and they'll look in his ears again. Hopefully the wax didn't build back up. They said some kids are just prone to it. But we'll see. They did mention like the possibility of tubes, which I hope we don't have to go down that road, but we'll see. Are you eating toast now? I thought you were you didn't like the toast. You just want to use your fork, huh? Uh. Toast? We just got in. I um, went and got a pedicure. Bentley sat on my lap. He was a little angel babe. Um, <clears throat> picked up Louie. We grabbed some lunch. And now we're home. Bentley fell asleep in the car, so I carried him up into his crib. But he is not wanting to sleep. He's been doing this like for the last few days where he just screams like as soon as you put him down, even if he's asleep. Um, and I'm a big, big believer in the cry it out method. I did it with Addie when I had to sleep train her and it was life changing. Um, we've never had to sleep train Bentley, but up until recently he started this thing. But He's um, not stubborn, so he'll, he'll cry for a couple minutes, but then he usually goes right to sleep. Um, but if I, if I go in there, he just gets more upset. So we're gonna have lunch. Louis has more studying to do for his test tomorrow. Um, my parents called to see if they could pick Addie up from school for me today and come over and hang out. So that's amazing for me because I don't have to go anywhere else today. This is my lunch. Whenever I go to Subway, I get the same thing. But long on wheat, provolone cheese, all veggies, no meat, tomatoes, lettuce, spinach, cucumbers, pickles, olives, and banana peppers. And these are my weakness. <laughs> He's almost out. I just curled my hair a little bit. I dusted off my old hot tools. I was using my T3, but the barrel that I have on that one is a one and a quarter inch. It's a little bit too thick for like what I wanted, so I broke this guy out. I do have the one inch wand, but honestly, I was just feeling lazy today and I didn't feel like, so I relied on the clip. But anyway, I'm gonna just do a quick face of makeup and I thought I would chat with you really quick. I wanted to share these. These were sent to me by, by Volition. These are their new apple cider vinegar resurfacing peel pads. I only just tried them yesterday for the first time. And man, did I like them. So they're individually packaged and they're like little mittens, little mitts that go on your hands. They smell just like apple cider vinegar. Um, and you guys know I do not, not use these, use daily exfoliation pads. I usually use the ones from First Aid Beauty. These are my favorite. But I wanted to try these. And I've always heard about apple cider vinegar being really good as a toner. I was very intrigued by these. Let me read to you about them. 
says they are supposed to improve skin texture, helps promote cell renewal, which is why I love them. Tones complexion, purifies clogged pores, adds radiance. And they have glycolic acid, witch hazel. There's no salicylic acid. Um, just like oils, essential oils, and I don't know. But I do really like these, and I used them last night, like after I washed my face just to make sure I got like all the rest of my makeup and stuff off, but they definitely leave your skin feeling like super clean. So those are great. I'm sure I'll be able to get these at Sephora very soon. Um, I take my ring off. Stopped and got a chai on the way home. This is my new drink if you haven't heard me talk about it. Grande Ice Chai. I only get two pumps. They normally put four, which is way too much. I add a pump of cinnamon, pump of vanilla, almond milk, and then I add cold foam. It's delicious. Eye cream. Well, that exfoliator is like soaking into my skin. This is the Dermalogica Positive Stress Positive Eye Lift. It has this really cool and cooling metal applicator. And then I'm gonna put on some like a pear. I know you guys are like super shocked to see this, I know. So I'm gonna do this really quick. I think I'm gonna use, because I wanna show you guys on camera, the Milani foundation that I also blew the dust off and have been using. I had like two little breakouts on my forehead this past week and I'm wondering if it was from that foundation because I haven't changed anything else, like skincare wise. But, I mean, they weren't anything like major, but something I'm gonna keep an eye on. Total Eye by Color Science. Two things, two steps that I never don't, that I never miss. And this just goes right on top of your eye cream, your eye moisturizer. This is not really an eye moisturizer. It's more of like a brightener and corrector. So don't replace your eye creams with this. It does help too if your under eyes are like hydrated when you apply this, makes it better. A product that I've been using a lot lately. I don't know if you guys remember in my get ready video, Recently, I put concealer on before foundation, but I've been using this again, which I forgot I had, the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I've been using this, and therefore, I don't feel like I need the concealer. And this is really just meant to go underneath your eyes, and this kind of does exactly what I was using the, the pre-foundation concealer for. I don't use a lot on, on this side because I don't really need it, but this side I do have that like pretty dark blue line. So I've just been using the corrector instead of layering concealer. And it's been working pretty good. I do really love this BB balm. I've mentioned this, but I'm just going light today. Um, I would use, usually do this or foundation. If I do both, it's because I'm doing super full coverage because I'm filming or something. I mean, I know I'm filming today, but I'm technically not filming filming. So I'm not doing like full perfect skin glam makeup. So this is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1. I have the shade Light Beige. There was a point where I really was obsessed with this. I love the pump and I don't know why I stopped using it, honestly. I think it was just because I just fell in love with Dermablend and never looked back. But I've been cleaning out my makeup stash and makeup collection. Got rid of a lot of products that were expired that I've had in my collection forever. And found this guy. It's been in this drawer, which I'm in every day, but I'm literally in here for like the same five products every day. So I had a whole stash in the back of my drawer that I forgot that I had. So. This is really nice coverage. It's pretty full coverage. You can layer it, you can build it up. Like I said, I'm not going for like 
full glam. I'm just, just covering to even out my skin. I am using my Shape Tape. You guys know I love and I am obsessed with the Avocado Bendy Concealer. The only reason I'm going back to my Shape Tape is to use it up because as I was clearing out, came across it, I'm almost out of it. I've had it for a while. So I'm just using it up at this point and then I think I will remain using my Avocado Concealer from First Aid Beauty because I feel like you get the same amount of coverage but the product's not as heavy. I do still love Shape Tape. I just like the Avocado Concealer purely based on the fact that it's lighter. Well, lighter on your skin, not lighter in coverage. And if you're wondering, the Shape Tape color I use is Light Sand. Set that with the Laura Mercier. Somebody on Instagram the other day told me that Laura Mercier has a new like blurring powder that she really loves for under the eyes. So if any of you have tried that, let me know. I think I'm gonna try it out. I love her translucent powder. It's like my jam. Bronzer brush, this is from Ever. It's one of my favorites. The bronzer that I use, not to be confusing, is Radiant Light. It's by Hourglass. It is their ambient lighting powder. This is not their bronzer, but I use it as a bronzer. I get questions every day still about this. And it is confusing because they have a bronzer in the shade Radiant, but this is their powder. But I get the shade Radiant, it's the darkest one, and I use that as my bronzer. And it's perfect, like, subtle bronze. It's not, I probably, I don't know. I don't know if I'll use this as much in the summer. In the summer, I'll probably want something a little bit darker. Like, I love the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. This is like a true bronze. This is a good summer bronze. But I do really love the finish of these powders. Blush is hard to open. Charlotte Tilbury Love Glow. I love Charlotte Tilbury blushes. They are just perfect and they last all day. This is a little Zoeva brush, if you're curious. My little Becca Champagne Pop. One of these Origins Blooming Shears. This is my favorite one. It's in the shade Honey Blush. It's a little bit of color, a lot of bit of shine, and a lot of moisture. And it's like a good nude. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just brush out these lashes. They're kind of insane right now. I have one on this side that's like twisted and it's been driving me crazy since yesterday and I can't untwist it. I washed them in the shower today. Oh, I think I just got it. Hoping to do it, like mush it around with my brush, but. If you are curious, I do get lash extensions and I get the volume lash extensions. They are different from the classics. I think the classics are more well known and more popular. Not everyone does volume lash extensions. The difference though is rather than one individual lash extension being attached to your lashes, your natural lash, a fan of lashes is attached to one of your natural lashes. But the fans are made up of individual lashes and they're much lighter and like finer. So they're not heavy. And what I really love about it is, the main thing is it makes your lashes just look so full all the time. And even if you like lose lashes here and there, like when they grow, grow and fall out, there's just so many fans overlapping that whereas a, if a classic lash fell, extension fell out, you can like see a noticeable gap, which is why I hated it and why I went every two weeks. But now if you lose like a small fan, it's you, that space is usually overlapped by other fans, so you can't even tell that you're missing lashes, um, which is amazing. And I go every three weeks. Honestly, I could go every month for a fill and be completely fine, but I like them really full. So I go every three weeks. Just thought I would show you because I realized my hair is up the way that it was um, a couple days ago on my Instagram. I posted a picture of me wearing my favorite lived in striped pajamas and the way my hair was. I have gotten so many questions asking for a tutorial. I literally have to laugh because it's like the simplest thing and I'm not a hair girl, but 
I just did it to my hair, so I thought I would show you again. So I have a scrunchie. I just got this from a local boutique by my house. It's small, which is why I like it. But normally, my go-tos are these Invisibobbles. So you can do this with these too. But essentially, the trick to my little like half up top knot is using very minimal hair. So I just grab like the front and I don't smooth it and I don't brush it. I just grab it and I wrap it. Like that's all I do. And I kind of like poof this, wrap these around, pull these back. And then I just like pull the front out. That's it. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. What's up, Baba? Are you falling asleep on me? Uh, Mister, I don't want to sleep. What? What are you pointing to? Uh, Mommy's water? That's my water. Uh, Mine. Mmm, all that yummy backwash. So good. It's massive. It makes this room look small all of a sudden, but I am obsessed with it. It came with all of these pillows, but I decided to do um, like two different kinds. So you can see this is the color of the couch. This is a little bit darker, like a brown, and then an accent, and then I also have gray. So I can kind of switch out the look of the couch how I want. I don't know if I did the pillows right. I just did whatever, but I love how white it is. Um, and then this can actually pull up towards one of the ends and be like a chaise or a table. And it's actually like it breaks into five pieces. So there's little metal hooks on the side that connects them. But you do have the option of breaking them up. But we really like the sectional. It's already a mess because the kids have been like throwing themselves on it. But I love it. The only thing I just said to Dan was like, I can already see I'm gonna stub my toes until I get used to it on the base of that so many times. Bentley, stop doing that. That's not nice. Ah, you're gonna go on timeout. You do nice to Addy. You do nice. Nice. Good job. Good job. Do you like it, Addy? Hello. Do you like it? Why aren't you sitting on it? I like it because we can all fit on it and have family movie nights. I love the color. I might regret it, but for now I love it. And now I'm thinking more than ever I need to put curtains back up because I feel like they're missing. There's this weird, awkward space here. I don't want to close it up because this is really the only way to leave the room other than we could go around back. But I don't know, maybe like something on that wall, like a sign from Hobby Lobby. But then again, I think the curtains might be what I'm needing. So if you guys have suggestions, and I still need to like floof this up since I took all the Christmas stuff down. And I'll put the color of our walls in the description box. I get asked about it a lot. It's by Sherwin Williams. I'll put the name of it below. And look, these furniture guys bumped my candle holders. These are old from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> it's so cozy. You literally could fit two bodies, like big bodies laying side by side. It's so wide. <laughs> Is it hubby approved? Yeah, I like it, I love it. Say hi to the Okay. Bye.
Dan's going to pick Louie up. I dropped him off before at the center so he could play basketball. And he's going to be surprised center. of this couch. So he's going to pick him up. He's going to be surprised. He's going to be surprised. This is so amazing. I don't want to leave. Hold me. me. Uh, and I don't want to leave you. Oh, Benny's jealous. This is my ad. My ad. It is 3 a.m. and I wanted to come on and end the vlog way earlier, but our night did not go as planned. So, put Addy to bed at 8.30, I gave her a bath. She ate her entire meal, acting fine. She was begging to let us let her stay up, completely fine. And then, like a little bit before 10, Louie went up to bed and I guess he checked on her and she was like really congested, like breathing, almost like sh not struggling to breathe, but just like really congested. So he called me and when I went in her room to blow her nose, she was burning up. So I took her temperature and it was 103.5. Panic attack. <laughs> like I have no idea how that happened. No idea. Um, so because of her um, illness every time she gets a fever above 101 we immediately have to go to the ER so called her oncologist they called the ER and um, her dad met us there and they have like this whole protocol that regardless of the situation we get there they take blood cultures they do a CBC they give her Tylenol I'm not supposed to or allowed to give her any kind of Tylenol because they you know, they don't want it to just like mask the fever. Um, and then they start her on a pretty potent antibiotic. So they do all of that before they even know what's wrong. Because nine times out of 10, the things that come back that it could be, the antibiotic that they give her knocks a lot of those things out. So they just automatically dose that. So once we got to the hospital, her fever was up to like 105. And the only other time I've seen her fever that high was when we were inpatient one time. It got up to 106, which scared the F out of me. And I remember they were like packing ice packs around her, like trying to cool her down. Um, but her blood pressure was like okay until it wasn't. And then they came like flying in her room. They were like, you need to wake her up. We need to strip her. Her blood pressure dropped. I, it was like probably the most scared I've ever been since when I was actually getting her diagnosis. Um, but as soon as they like laid her down, woke her up, got her to like be awake, um, her blood pressure went back to normal. So we won't know until tomorrow what's going on. Um, they'd swapped her for the flu. They did a chest x-ray. They didn't see any pneumonia. Um, they think it's probably just like rhinovirus or RSV, which she's had both which really those are just like colds and there's nothing to do to treat them um but her fever came down she doesn't have a fever right now and the reason i'm vlogging with you is because i have to give her another dose of tylenol at 3 30 so i'm not going to go to bed just to wake up in 10 minutes so i have to give her tylenol and then i have to give her motrin at 5 30 so i'm probably not going to sleep tonight but that's okay because we're home um, her ANC was like just at the threshold that the doctor felt comfortable enough to let us go home. Otherwise, she would have had to admit us. So, sleep or not, I'm just grateful to be home in our own beds, even if it's just for a little bit. Um, but she's like completely fine, back to herself. She was being sassy pants, her dad and I, um, talking to me like halfway home until she clonked out. And she's doing great. She's so amazing like just such a warrior like her I don't know her demeanor like if I was in the ER with 105 fever I would be a raging miserable miserable bitch and she was just like hmm. <laughs> happy self she was at one point like a little bit delirious like she kept passing out and she was like talking in her sleep um but 
yeah i mean knock on wood hopefully it's nothing just a common cold i have to follow up with her um oncology team tomorrow hopefully she i don't think she'll spike a fever again with this medicine that i'm going to be giving her the motrin and the tylenol but um fingers crossed but i've never been so scared because like i said the only other time her fever was that high we were in the hospital so as scary as it was like we were in the hospital so I didn't have to freak out but this time when I took it and it was 103.5 like usually her temperature is like 100 101 even 102 I've seen it 103.5 I almost fell over oh, so crazy um I'm just really happy that her doctor wanted us to go home because sometimes I feel like you're worse off being in the hospital especially during flu season you're just exposed to so much so many worse things and so much sickness but anyway i will end the vlog here <laughs> today was a really good day it just ended badly but it honestly really wasn't bad i mean this is this is our this is our life for the next year or so so um i'm still very grateful that she's here and she's home and she's in remission and these little bumps along the way are just bumps so Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.